Well, I definitely wasn't expecting a movie like Megan to impress me to the level that it has. And I've seen my fair share of horror films, especially killer doll films. The Child's Play movies, all the Annabelle movies, the Puppet Master franchise, I've seen them all. In fact, I'd say that I've watched more horror in my life than literally anything. The fun thing about horror movies and their sequels is that they can either be really bad or really good. You just don't know what's going to happen these days. The franchises I just mentioned have their share of good and bad sequels. Some are just laughably bad, while others are so-so. Here and there, you'll even get the wackier ones, like Trilogy of Terror from 1975. If you were lucky enough to catch that special on the sci-fi channel like I did when I was a teenager, you might have caught a glimpse of the tiny tiki doll that screams like a hyena and attacks the poor defenseless woman with a knife. It's definitely a guilty pleasure watch because it does suck, but it also makes me laugh. I, I don't know why. I mean, seriously, he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's stabbing her. It's just ridiculous. I mean, <laughs> what, what do you mean get to the point? I was, I was getting to the point. <laughs> oh, everybody, this is my cat, Play-Doh. He has a unique perspective on things. Speaking of perspective, yes, my point. Because of 2022 being the worst year for cinema on a global scale, with some of our favorite franchises and genres being ruined by virtue signaling activists, I've become reasonably skeptical when going to see any movie. And you can imagine how I might have felt sitting down to watch Megan, but rest easy. And in fact, get excited. Megan's awesome. It's so good that I feel kind of bad for saying that it's this good because I'm likely to get some disagreements here. Created by Bloomhouse Productions and written by horror veteran Akila Cooper, this techno-horror comedy centers on Gemma, a brilliant roboticist working at a toy company on the verge of creating an artificially intelligent doll designed to help improve children's lives. The timing, of course, couldn't have come at a better time because Katie, her estranged niece, just lost her parents and now in turn has become her child. The two girls struggle to bond with one another because of an extremely incompetent therapist. Oh my lord, she's just so bad. It's a, it's a terrible therapist. And Gemma falling behind on her work. So, as a solution, she finishes building Megan and digitally pairs it with Katie in an attempt to both provide her with a healing companion and to impress Gemma's boss who pressures her to finish her project or move on. And guess what? She then programs Megan to protect Katie physically and emotionally. The idea works a little too well. Just from hearing that, I bet what's running through your mind is, well, obviously things go very wrong, Dread, and the AI goes rogue and starts murdering people, right? What do you think was stupid? We've seen this thing before. You would be correct, but what Megan does differently as a film is shown in the quality of its writing. This movie is not what it seems, and I can understand why some might not want to see it after watching the trailers, which kind of came off as tweeny, girl boss, female empowerment, and the likes thereof which is why I mentioned my earlier skepticism. But the writing here is actually amazing, and you get sucked right into its story and characters. Gemma is intelligent and involved. She's present and reasonably imperfect. Funny enough, after seeing Get Out a few years ago, I half expected her to have a crazier role in Megan for some reason, but no, nah, no choke smiling scene this time around. Sorry! The same goes for Katie in that she's a traumatized child who lost her parents and is desperate to find a connection. She's no idiot either, but acts as any little girl would. The actress playing her is really great too. I've seen her in other projects, including the first season of Haunting of Hill House on Netflix, which is, in my opinion, the greatest horror series ever created. The dynamic between Gemma and Katie is really quite wonderful, and that both are trying to find a way to cope with the reality of loss and death. Unfortunately, so is Megan, and it just so happens that her philosophy on death is slightly more aggressive, I guess? <laughs> I, yeah, I know I'm being vague, Plato. Things don't just suddenly occur this way, though. The story of Megan is crafted carefully and suggests that the doll develops murderous intent through the actions of others rather than the problems being inherent. I like this approach a lot. Why? Because the writers take their time showing you the relationship between Gemma and Katie. And then afterward, they're developing a relationship with Megan, who essentially becomes a part of the family over time. This is really important because it makes the moment where things go awry all that more impactful. The doll as a character is phenomenal. In the first minutes that we meet Megan, she is immediately a welcome presence in the film, as is her intelligent approach to a child dealing with tremendous loss. The film shows you how Megan works, and it's incredibly done in my opinion. Even in the quieter moments, emotionally resonant. I won't go into spoilers too much, but I will say that her introduction is probably the best part of the movie. It's not something that you would expect, and I think that's what got me so involved. Perhaps the filmmakers knew that introducing Megan to audiences was the most important part of the process. 
And it shows, it really does. There was clearly a lot of thought put into her design for this film. Her reactions to things that people say and do, the way that her cold eyes shift during conversations implying that she's always processing and learning, the way that she uses words and memories to help or manipulate or terrorize people, even the way that she walks around and moves her body is robotic. The film pulls you into her mindset and how she analyzes things so that when you see something snapping in her brain, you're picking it up right away and going, no, Megan, don't think of it like that. We love you. Keep in mind, she's not real, but with movie magic, it's difficult to not think that she is. And boy, is she frightening. Again, not spoiling things, but people and animals are not safe in this movie, let me tell you. And the way that she antagonizes victims using different methods of emotional manipulation and technological abilities, such as voice mimicking, hacking software, and doing random dance sequences, Sorry, I don't have an answer for that one. Chalk it up to her trying to freak out her victim or something. It's all done very well, consistently tense, and at times, scary. Even with a PG-13 rating, and I heard that the movie was supposed to be much gorier and more violent. But I don't think that would have changed anything very much, because the film's strength is most assuredly in its writing. The direction from Gerard Johnston, who I actually don't know much about, is pretty fantastic. The lighting, the atmosphere, the pacing, and the good intentions that the movie presents within Megan before psycho killer tendencies begin to overtake who she is. It's all very impressive. One highlight I wanted to mention was the music from Anthony Willis. Foregone is the traditional horror theme and off-key violin flicking that you're used to when bad things are happening in horror movies. Megan the Doll has a theme threaded with a sense of tragic hope that uplifts the viewer. And then descends into traditional themes later on. I don't know. I liked it. What did you think, Plato? You thought it was meow I thought it was funny. I, I did. You have a very creative soul. I I'm not patronizing you, Plato. Jeez. It's like I'm living with my parents again. One thing I didn't like about the movie is that in terms of shock factor or jump scares, they're used sparingly, I guess. The terror occurs mostly in the buildup and increasing tension between Megan and Gemma as they compete for the affection and trust of Katie. But there are some great sequences of horror when Megan is just being Megan. The killing of people and animals is just a part of the deal. The movie magic, as I've stated, is in the little things. And the little things in movies, the small moments between characters, the emotional inflections in their faces and the in-betweens, where you're questioning if they intend to do something bad or not, is where I feel this movie's strengths truly lie. I recommend that you give this movie a shot if you're looking for a refreshing take on the killer doll subgenre. I can see Megan easily becoming a horror icon, but that's what happens when a movie is done well. Regardless, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Did you think that Megan was a good movie? If so, or if not, how come? That being said, I hope you all have a beautiful day. Like and share this video, and if you'd like to see more of my content, consider subscribing and clicking that notification bell. I look forward to seeing you all again next time. Say goodbye, Play-Doh.